Something I have never understood is how major companies could put people with next to no care for their properties in charge of said properties and expect them to succeed. Marvel, regardless of quality, had a coherent plan for a while at least, while on the flip side, their primary rival, DC, has floundered for years before ever getting the, to the starting line. So after numerous failures and multiple delays, we finally get to see The Flash, which follows Barry Allen, played by the despicable Ezra <laughs> Miller. You know, that guy who's been grooming Takata Iron Eyes in a physically and verbally abusive relationship lined with more drugs than Steve Tyler's mic stand since she was 12 years old? Yeah, this piece of human shit. Any hooser, Barry is feeling sad about his mom dying, and despite having, of all people, Batman's shoulder to cry on, Barry still isn't over it, and he's been trying to help clear his dad of all the charges for his wife's death. Then one night, on the anniversary of this event, he visits the old house, and in a fit, he turns and runs to blow off steam, and in doing so, he learns that he can travel back in time and decides to push his limits by saving his mom. After which, he runs back into the future, to the present time, where he meets his now living mother and a second fucking Ezra <laughs> Miller. As if one grooming pedophile wasn't enough, now comes along the douchebag who threw a chair at a woman in Honolulu. After getting involved with his counterpart, Barry One pieces together that he is not only not back in his own timeline, but in fact this is the exact day that of all all things, General Zod decides to attack Earth. Yeah, if that isn't a fucky option for a Flash villain. Compounding this, Barry too doesn't have his powers yet. So the pair have to travel all the way back to the lab in order to recreate the experiment, and in the process, both of them are struck with lightning, and for some unexplainable reason, it takes away Barry One's powers. How? Not a clue, and you never receive an answer as to how he survives the gaping hole in his chest from the lightning strike. So now powerless, with a super-powered stoner at his side, he looks for someone else who can help to stop Zod. However, there is another problem. For yet another unspeakable reason, there are no more metahumans on this planet. That's right, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and others are just, they just don't exist yet. So now thoroughly panicked, Dingleberries 1 and 2 head off to the only person that could help. Bruce Wayne. And like so many other things, this isn't the same person as before, although he does agree to help. So now with Michael Keaton at their side, the trio sets off for Siberia to find Superman. When they get there, after very obviously letting themselves be discovered, they eventually find not Kal-El, but Kara Zor-El. Yeah, his cousin. And with her joining the team, they get Barry One his powers back, and they go to battle Zod. However, the battle goes about as well as trying to beat Dark Souls while getting sodomized with an eggplant. Batman and Kara both die, Barry too gets hurt and continues to devolve mentally until he eventually becomes a third Barry, sacrificing himself to stop what keeps happening. And with all of this, Barry One can't keep going back in time to save them no matter what he does, and he eventually realizes that he must go back all the way to the past and ensure his mother's death to save the world. In doing so, he sets everything right, or at least mostly, until Bruce Wayne comes in and he's played by George Clooney, minus the nipple suit. First things first, there are only so many ways you can mock bad CGI, but this film looks worse than The Matrix Reloaded. And I can't say that it is entirely on the 3D departments, since this film went through so many reshoots and rewrites it would make Alien 3 blush. Seriously, look at this shot! The same people that will hate on Minecraft because it doesn't look good are the same ones telling you that this is photorealistic. And this is... This is something that has always bugged me personally, but why does he produce lightning when he moves even a little bit? Lightning is shot around so much in every room that it turns it into a plasma ball, but nothing gets scorched. And maybe I just answered my own question, but does the sound produced mean nothing as well? He moves at super speed, and never once does anyone's ears blow out like the deaf kid from Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. So if it does nothing to or for anyone in these scenes, why why not just remove it and save all those poor 3D artists all the mental breakdowns? Something else that bothers me is the amount of cameos being greater than the number of times Ezra <laughs> Miller has been arrested for second-degree assault. Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Batman, Batman, and yes, it just keeps fucking going. Which brings up an interesting question about the use of dead actors through digital necromancy, but that's a whole nother conversation to get into. It's like the movie is trying to rely on nostalgia just so it'll just keep trying to dangle keys in front of you so you'll shut up and watch the movie and be like, Yeah, it was good. 
And something major that I did get hung up on was the idea of Barry 1 going back in time. I don't want to get into the mess of Barry 1 being able to go back in time to alter things, but the other versions of him can't. Probably because they're supposed to be like canon events or some bullshit, I don't know. No, what really rustles my jammies is the fucking butterfly effect. Doing one thing on the other end of the world somehow alters all of these other major events? That doesn't make any sense. How does how does saving his mother prevent Aquaman from being born? They're in two completely unrelated areas with no connection to each other, but saving her somehow affects Arthur's mom and prevents her from washing up on shore? How absolutely stupid of an idea. That, that's like Tony Stark stepping on an extra blade of grass and then out of nowhere Wakanda crowns Ryan Gosling as the Black Panther. For as hilarious as that would be to see, I, I don't buy it for an instant. You have a better chance of convincing me that Ezra <laughs> Miller wasn't served a restraining order for breaking and entering into a hotel room to steal personal documents from a couple he was staying with. Now, the real reason that anyone wants to see this film is for sure Michael Keaton's return as Batman, and his performance is by far the best thing in the film. It is pretty dumb that he still can't turn his neck as the classic suit is still stiffer than Epstein's corpse, but he is also supported with CGI, allowing him to fight in ways he never could before, so he gets to be the Batman we all knew he could be. After all, like a good actor, he comfortably slides into an old role and gives a good performance. On the flip side, the worst treated character is by far Kara. She's on screen for maybe a total of like 15 or 20 minutes, not including repeated scenes or the like, so she has no real time to express herself as a character. In fact, she does so little, she's the equivalent of the Sith dildo dagger from The Rise of Skywalker. Like, the woman in Iceland that Ezra <laughs> Miller chokeslammed had a better arc than Kara's. Even her fight scenes are short, shoddy, and have no impact, leaving me to believe that this woman was robbed in the editing room. And it's not like she didn't do a good job, she was just fine, but man, they did her dirty. And this all leads into the biggest issue with the film, who by far is The Flash himself. I don't know whose bright idea it was to hire Ezra <laughs> Miller, but it obviously wasn't well thought out at the time, like when Ezra broke into a house in Vermont to steal liquor. This version of The Flash was written to be a whiny brat who doesn't feel he gets the attention he deserves, as if that didn't already overlap with the pedophile's real-world persona. He's sad and mopes around, and while the character isn't an idiot per se, as he is a forensics analyst that actually cares about the cases he's involved in, when you add a second Barry, whose favorite movie is probably Pineapple Express, that should throw up more red flags than the mother and three children going missing from Ezra's property in Vermont. This film just amplifies the amount and number of the same Barry from the Justice League, and there is no refinement, tweaks, or adjustment to make him more appealing. It's just more of what we already dislike. So, The Flash is an absolute dumpster fire, but the one question I'm left with is, why even continue the DCEU at all? Superhero movies have been failing for years now. Everyone feels the fatigue. Amber Turd scenes have been added back into Aquaman 2. Henry Cavill was fired while Ezra the Child Groomer Miller gets backed up. And the DCEU rebuild is in the hands of James Gunn. It's wild to me that no one has come out and admitted they messed everything up from the beginning, and yet they continue to push forward with no end in sight. And while I get ready for these coming disasters like a shark smelling blood in the water, I can't help but laugh at the irony of this month proving the downfall of these movies, companies, and genre have been brought on by pride and hubris. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.